In this video, I'm going to show you how you can animate a still image using Adobe Photoshop and Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So this is the image that I want to animate. Now, first of all, I am just going to expand this. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So to do that, I'm just going to go Command T on the keyboard with the background selected. Of course, I do need to unlock that first. So I'm going to go Command T to load transform. Alternatively, you can go into edit and find transform just there, free transform. Just going to scale this down a little bit. And now from here, I'm just going to go into this option here and I'm just going to draw a rectangle at the top of the frame and generative fill will pop up. I'm just going to put expand and generate. Now you can see it's done a great job with the transition, but up here it's messed up a little bit. So let me just have a look at the alternatives. This one's quite nice, although this is a bit useless. So I'm just going to highlight this and I'm just going to put remove. Great, and I'm happy with that. So now we can just work on the right side of the image. So highlight the right side, generative fill and just put expand. So if we just flick through the options, you can see the first option is probably going to be the best for us. I could go through and clean this up a little bit, but I'm not going to bother for the sake of this tutorial. So I'm just going to highlight all of those layers. We'll right click and put convert to smart object. Now from here, I want to focus on removing myself. So I'm going to go to the left of Photoshop, going to go into this option and I'm going to select the object selection tool. If I just hover over myself, you'll see it's actually done a pretty good job at outlining myself. So I'm just going to select that and then I'm just going to right click and put select and mask. Now in here, you just want to go through and just paint over the parts that have not been included. Now, I know this microphone isn't part of me, but for the sake of this tutorial, I am just going to include this. So I'm going to go to this brush, going to increase the size, and I'm just going to paint over this brush just to include this into the comp. If something is included that you don't want to include, then just hold option, or I believe on Windows it is alt and just paint over that section but you should have something like this. Once you're happy with that, you can just press OK and this is the mask. So I'm just going to go Command C and Command V to copy and paste that into its own layer. So as you can see, this is the original image and this is the copied layer. Now from here, we just need to fill in the backgrounds. So I'm just going to hold Command or Control on Windows on the keyboard and select layer one. That's going to reactivate the mask. Now I'm just going to go up to select, go to modify and put expand. I'm going to expand this by 10 pixels, press OK. Then I'm going to select this bottom layer and select generative fill. And I'm just going to put remove. We can put generate. And if we just turn off the top layer, we can see what this has created behind us. So. I think this is a pretty good starting point, although I feel like there might be a little bit to clean up, but I'm just going to select that. Now I'm going to highlight both of those layers, right click and put convert to smart object. So you can see we've still got myself isolated, but now this is the background. Now I'm just going to go up to the clone stamp tool on the left of Photoshop. I'm going to decrease the size, make sure the hardness is at zero. Then I'm going to hold the option button. I'm not sure what the button is on Windows, but I can put a thing on the screen right here. I'm going to hold the option and copy this wall here, and then I'm just going to paste over the background. So I'm just removing whatever this is. Then I'll do the same thing over here because I'm not a fan of the way this looks. And I'm going to remove this as well. I don't think this is relevant. Great. So if we zoom out and I turn my layer back on, you can see this is with, this is without. Now, in my example, you can see I'm sitting behind the desk, so I could actually add that desk back into the mask if I wanted to and then paint over that, but I'm not going to bother in this example. So from here, I want to go into file, save as, and you want to save this as a Photoshop document. So I'm going to go format Photoshop and I'm going to call this animated image, press save, press OK. And now I'm going to go into Premiere Pro. I'm going to go into the media browser and I'm going to find the PSD file that we just saved. I'm going to right click on it and press import. And it's really important here that we go to import as and change this to individual layers. Now we can open up this folder. 
and we can drag both of those layers into a sequence. Now, as you can see, my layers are separated. So from here, I'm just going to drag the person layer on top of the background layer and we can begin doing some animation. So I'm going to go through to the end of this. I'm going to create a brand new keyframe on the position and the scale on this layer and I'll do the same on the bottom layer. Then I'm going to go to the very beginning and I'm just going to move the position of the background. Then I'm just going to increase the scale on the background and move that down. Then I'll go to the top layer. I'm going to create a brand new keyframe on position and scale there. Then we'll go to those end keyframes that we created and I'm just going to increase the scale. Move this up and now when we play this back you'll notice this is the effect that we have. Of course if you wanted to slow this down then you could just increase the length of the clip and then just move the keyframes over but make sure the keyframes are always sitting at the same point in time. So we end up with this. Now the great thing is because this is a separate layer, because these are now separated, if we move the subject layer up onto three and we create some text, there we go. I can now place that onto video layer two. I can move that just behind myself here. And now you can see I'm actually going to interact with that. So as I animate up, I'm actually going to be crossing in front of that and it's going to look like it's almost rotoscoped. So as you can see, I'm interacting with that and passing it in front of it. Of course, as well, you can highlight everything, right click, go to nest, and we can do some further animation onto this. So if we increase the scale, pull the position down and then go to the left. If we create a brand new keyframe at the beginning and then move towards the end of that movement, we can move everything over to the right and then up. So we're adding another layer of animation on top of this. So the background's going away, the subject's going forwards, and the entire composition is panning over. So you can see it's created this really dynamic effect. So there you go. As you can see, this does look really awesome. There's a lot that you could do with this. You can get really creative. You can apply effects and add some blurring and add some coloring and do loads of effects to this. But that is how you take a still image, make it more dynamic by separating the layers and adding some movement in. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. And if you did enjoy watching this video, then please consider checking out one of these videos just up here. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.